In just a moment, Autolite presents Suspense, starring Rosalind Russell. Hello, Harlow. How is Mr. Autolite by Cornelius Wilcox's fine December evening? Well, by Cornelius, fit as a fiddle, Hap. How's yourself? All set for winter? Yep, Overcoat I... out of mothballs? Yep, I... Storm windows up? Snow shovel on the back porch? Well, I... Auto light stay full battery in your car? Harlow, you will try... You know, friend, when the bottom drops right out of the thermometer, you'll appreciate a dependable auto light stay full battery more than ever. Why, everybody ought to switch to auto light. For those auto light stay full batteries are just loaded with extra features. First, they have an extra large liquid reserve. Need water only three times a year in normal car use? What an extra. And what's more, Hank? Here's the next Autolite Stay Full Battery Extra Harlow. Suspense. Suspense. Autolite and its 60,000 dealers and service stations bring you Radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Starring tonight, Miss Rosalind Russell in Anton Leder's production of The Sisters, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Here is one I think would be very lovely. It has a far superior lining, pure silk, much heavier than the others we've looked at. Uh, do you care for this one, Miss Haskell? Yes, that's very nice. But I believe I'd like to see something perhaps even a little better. Oh, of course. If you will just step over this way, Miss Haskell. Now, here, here is an exquisite casket. Something that really does honor to the departed. Yes, it's beautiful. Now, the interior is just the same as the last, but the casket itself is of bronze, solid bronze. Won't that be rather heavy? Oh, yes, but not too heavy. Uh, will there be six pallbearers? I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter, really. Four men can carry this very easily, very. Uh, Miss Haskell, I want you to notice the floral design here. All hand-wrought, every bit of it. And, uh, oh, oh, yes, uh, notice the seams in this casket. Airtight and watertight, uh, guaranteed. <clears throat> You know, of course, how important that is. Yes. Yes. Uh, but this casket, in a hundred years or even two hundred years, will be just as strong and will look just as beautiful as it does on this stand today. You couldn't buy a finer piece of workmanship. How much would this one be, please? Uh, this casket, a uh, Duravo, by the way, Duravo for durability, we say in the trade. Uh, this casket is priced at uh, $775. <clears throat> We uh, can't bring back the departed. Our only solace is the knowledge that we have done them the last possible honor. Very well. I'll take this one. Oh, I'm sure you are making a very wise choice. In all my years as a mortician, I've never found a family that regretted money spent on a duravo. Yes. <clears throat> now, uh, let me see. I'll give you a check. Oh, oh, that won't be necessary. Not immediately. After the funeral will do. Oh, uh, by the way, we haven't mentioned it. Our... Uh, <clears throat> Are we handling the funeral arrangements? I don't know yet. Oh. Well, uh, you want the casket delivered uh, somewhere? No. I'd like you to hold it for a while, please. Hold it? Uh, but uh, for how long? For three weeks. Three weeks? I don't understand. Uh, who is the party, the uh, deceased? Uh, who is the casket for? It's for me. <laughs> I heard you come in. Where have you been, Lydia? You've been gone all afternoon. I've been shopping. What did you buy? Did you get the ribbons I asked for? No, I didn't have time. Oh, I wanted some new ribbons. These are all worn out. See, Lydia? Uh, Ellie, I wish you'd stop putting ribbons in your hair like a schoolgirl. You're almost 40 years old. I know, Lydia. I know. Then try to act like it. Oh, hand me my sewing. And light the lamp. It's getting dark. I wonder why we have to grow old. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had always stayed young like we used to be? Oh, Lydia. <laughs> Remember when Mother used to send us out to school with our ribbons matching and our dresses matching? And at the end of the day, 
No one would even guess we were sisters because I was always so must and you were always so clean. <laughs> oh, I wish we were young again, Lydia. Stop talking nonsense, Ellie. It is nonsense, isn't it? Oh, the doorbell rang while you were out, just before you came home. You didn't answer us? Oh, no. You told me never to answer. I just looked out of the upstairs window. Did you see who it was? Oh, yes, yes, it was a man. A rather big man. He rang a long time and then he went away. He didn't see you, did he? Oh, no. I just peeked ever so carefully from behind the curtains. Then I came down here and watched him going down the walk. You came downstairs? Yes. I told you never to come down those stairs when I'm not in this house. It was all right, Lydia. I held on very tight to the banisters all the way. And I didn't once look down the stairwell. So I didn't get dizzy. And I didn't want to jump. Well, don't do it again. It was just that I was lonely. I didn't think you were ever coming home. Lydia, you didn't tell me what you bought. <laughs> a Duravo. What's that? What's a Duravo? Don't ask so many questions, Ellie. All right. Lydia, I think I'll sew, too. I could fix up one of these old ribbons here. May I, Lydia? Yes, yes, so. It will be good for you. Thank you. <laughs> Lydia. Yes? Lydia, could I go shopping someday? Don't be a fool. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I just thought that... No, I suppose you're right. It wouldn't do. Not yet. <laughs> Lydia, sing with me. You know I never sing. <laughs> there wasn't any mail today. Wasn't there? No. I thought perhaps there'd be a letter from David been such a long time since he's written, hasn't he? I haven't noticed. Oh, yes. He used to write every week on Tuesday, and I'd get the letter on Thursday. But there wasn't one this week or last or the week before that. Strange, isn't it? But perhaps he's been busy. Perhaps. Still, he never used to be too busy to write. I can't understand it. Do you suppose there's some other reason? What are you trying to say to me, Ellie? Are you hinting perhaps I'm keeping your mail from you? Oh, no. Well, you certainly seem to be. Why should I keep David's letters from you? But I didn't say that. I just said it was strange that David hasn't written, that's all. You wouldn't keep David's letters, I know that, Lydia. Go on with your sewing. Yes. I want to finish this ribbon. Stop singing that. Stop it. Lydia, it's to him. I don't I'm... care. I said stop. I'll learn something else. That's all you sing day and night, day and night. Same tune over and over and over. Now stop it. Lydia. Lydia, sometimes you frighten me. The way you look at me, you make me think that... that perhaps I'm not getting well. That perhaps I'm still... crazy. I'm not. I'm not still crazy. Am I, Lydia? Yes? Uh, evening. Are you Miss Lydia Haskell? Yes. Well, uh, can I speak to you for a minute? I was here this afternoon. There was no one home. What is it, please? We had a call from Doan Brothers, the undertakers. I'm from the police department. Oh, really? I don't see what the police could want with me. Come in, if you wish. Thank you. Sit down. Yeah, thank you. There's nothing we want, Miss Haskell, except it's sort of unusual for a woman to order a casket for herself. Unusual? I've heard of many cases of that kind. People who are alone in the world, there's no one else to look after things. Oh, yes, yeah, sure, I know. Only it's a little more unusual when you can name the date. The, uh, the undertaker said you wanted the casket held for three weeks. Why three weeks? There must be some reason for it. There is. I'm going to die. I shall die in three weeks or perhaps even before. There's no doubt in my mind about it, and that's why I've ordered the casket. 
You may call it a premonition if you want. Maybe I could also call it suicide. Well, that's why I'm here, Miss Haskell. I don't know whether you know it, but suicide's a crime in the eyes of the state. A crime for which there is no punishment. Not if it's successful, no. But there is prevention. I know I'm going to die. I feel it. But I have no intention of taking my own life. There's no need to do so. Miss Haskell, this premonition, as you call it, uh, have you any idea what, what brought it on? No. Have you been speaking to anyone? No fortune tellers or anything like that? <laughs> no. Well, what makes you so sure? How do you know you can trust this premonition? You're not an old woman. I, I'd say you're in pretty good health. You've got a lot of good years ahead of you. I have a religion, not a church religion, just one of my own. It preaches that people go on living until they've outgrown their usefulness. Then they die from one cause or another. When that time comes, the desire to live is gone. And only desire keeps the body and soul alive and breathing. Oh, I, I don't understand that. I'm sorry. Miss Haskell, do you live alone here? Yes. No relations, no housekeeper? I live alone here. Well, it's a pretty large house for a person living alone. There are three floors and far too many rooms. It's on the outskirts of town. It's quiet, and it gives me the privacy I've been looking for. A privacy which you are invading for the first time since I moved here five years ago. I'm sorry, Miss Haskell. I'm only doing my job. I was told to look you up and find out why you bought that casket. Then I think we may assume your job is over? Yeah, I guess so, but well, the office might ask me to drop back once in a while just to keep in touch, you know. I won't be at home. Why? You don't go out very much, I ask. The folks in town say they don't even see you more than once a week. When maybe. you come, I won't be at home. All right. Sorry to bother you. Good night. Good night. Oh, Miss Haskell, how are you going to die? I don't know, nor do I consider it important. Why should you? Good night. Good night. For suspense, Autolite is bringing you Miss Rosalind Russell in radio's outstanding theater of thrills... Suspense. Extra, extra. Hear all about the big extras you get with the wonderful Autolite Stay Full battery. How could I help hearing? Extra number one. Autolite Stay Full batteries have an extra large liquid reserve. Need water only three times a year in normal car use? Why, an Autolite Stay Full battery can give aces to an oasis and still have water to spare. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> extra number two. Autolite Stay Full batteries have extra large electrical capacity. That means extra power when you need it most by Cornelius. And listen to me, friend. You don't want to get caught with your battery down, so get an Autolite Stay Full battery right away. <laughs> Set them up in the other alley. All right, extra number three. Autolite Stay Full batteries have fiberglass insulation for extra long life. Why, Methuselah turned green with envy when he heard of those long-life Autolite Stay-Full batteries. Wait, don't quit now, Hollow, you're hot. Why, bye, Cornelius, friend. If you knew what I know, you'd switch to Autolite Stay-Full batteries right now. You'd pop into your puddle jumper, pour on the power, and set off at a peppy pace down to your nearest Autolite dealer for a splendid new Autolite Stay-Full battery, the battery with all the extras. Why, the thought of all those extra features makes me excited, exhilarated, exalted. Exhausted. Uh, you'll be an ex-announcer if you don't be quiet and listen to suspense. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Miss Rosalind Russell as Lydia with Miss Lorene Tuttle as Ellie in The Sisters. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. <laughs> After he'd gone, I stood there in the hall thinking. Perhaps I'd made a mistake. Perhaps I shouldn't have gone to the morticians. I had thought it would be so clever. But I hadn't thought he might become suspicious, send a policeman, send someone snooping around, asking questions, trying to find out things. I was so upset thinking about it, I, I hadn't heard her come down the stairs. Lydia. Ellie, what are you doing down here? What are you doing sitting on the steps in the dark? Lydia. Haven't I told you never to come down here at night? Lydia! What do you want? I heard that man who was here. Lydia, why did you buy the casket? Why are you going to die? You must, Lydia, you mustn't die. I'd be alone if you died. And you know what would happen. They'd send me away like they did once before. 
The people in the town will come and find me living here and they'd send me away. Go up to bed, Ellie. Go to sleep. How can I sleep? Oh, Lydia, you won't die. Promise me you won't. I promise you. Now go to bed. But why did you buy the casket? And the things you said to that man as if you wanted to die. Why, Lydia? Why do you want to die? I don't want to die. No one does. You have such a lot to live for, haven't you, Ellie? Yes. I've been happy, Lydia. You made me happy. And someday when I'm well again, I'll go back home. And David will be waiting for me. You know he'll be there. You've always told me he'd be waiting. And he'll see that I'm well again and he'll take me back. I'm not so old, am I? David won't see me as old. He told me that, that when I was well, no matter how long it took, he'd still see me as a young girl. That's why I've been happy. Just waiting for the time I can go back to David. Haven't you heard yet? And haven't you learned it? Don't you know yet that you're mad and you'll always be mad? No. Don't say that. I'm getting better, Lydia. Yes. You know I'm getting better. Yes, of course. Putting bows in your hair, sewing ribbons all day long, sneaking about the house at night, spying on me, singing the same hymn over and over and over until I think I'm going mad, too. Is that why you want to die? To get away from me? Why, I thought you loved me, Lydia. Why should I love you? Look what life has given me and tell me why. You've always spoiled everything for me, even from the time we were children. Why, how could I spoil everything? We were just like the same child, Lydia, twins. You were I and I was you. We looked the same, yes. We were born the same day, yes, and that's where it ended. You were the nice one. I used to hear them say so. You were even the prettiest, they said, as if they could see any difference between us. Well, whatever you wanted, you had. You smiled so beautifully, and I never smiled. I was the sullen one, the dark cloud in the house. You made it so, Lydia. We all loved you. When your doll was broken, they gave you mine. When you tore your dancing dress, you took mine. You gave it to me, Lydia. I remember you gave it to me. You gave it to me. I've always given things to you. I've given you my whole life. I even gave you David. Lydia, you were in love with David. He came to our house. Was it you he came to see? Oh, Lydia, I didn't know. You never knew. No one did. I had to stand by and, and watch you take him from me. And when you had your first attack, I was glad. People said it was a shame, but I was glad. Lydia. Because I knew that he could never have you. Oh, yes, you were going away and be cured. He was going to wait. But it wouldn't matter how long it... And it took him how long he waits. He'll never be cured, and he'll never have you. Never. You hate me. You've always hated me. I see it now. Even when you've been taking care of me. When we came to this town, you didn't bring me here so I'd be cured. You wanted to keep me this way. Man. That's why you took me out of that place. Because they might have made me well again. Go upstairs. You hate me. And now you're going to die. I Leave me told without you. anyone. I will not die. Oh, Ellie. Ellie, I'm sorry we had this quarrel. I didn't mean to upset you. It's just that I'm upset myself and, and tired. I didn't mean the things I said. You bought a cask. It was only an idea I had in case anything ever happened to me. You bought a cask. Lydia, was it for yourself? Or is it for me? Ellie, you wouldn't. You wouldn't, would you, Lydia? What are you talking about? Hold the lamp up. Hold it close to you. I want to see your face. Go, go, go up to bed. Yes. I can see it in your eyes. It is for me. You're going to kill me. You're going to murder me. Don't be a fool, Ellie. It's so you want to get rid of me. Because you hate me. Oh, now I see. I see. You love David. And you're going to kill me. And they'll come and find me and bury me. And they'll think it's you. Be quiet. That's why you bought the casket. They'll think it's you who is dead because no one knows I'm living here. And then you'll go away and, and, and you'll go back to David. And you'll say that Lydia has died. And he'll think you are me and that you're well again. And he'll marry you. You'll have him. You'll be Ellie. You'll have David in my place. Did you hear what I said? Be quiet. <laughs> now go upstairs and get to bed. Oh, Lydia. Lydia. How can you be so wicked? <laughs> Ellie. 
Ellie, are you awake? Ellie, uh, dear, you mustn't think any more about what we said tonight. Do you hear? It's not so, Ellie. It's just your imagination. You mustn't think about it. It will be bad for you. Are you asleep, Ellie? She's not asleep. She's lying over there on the other side of the room, staring at me through the dark. She knows it was the truth tonight. She's going to die. I'm going to kill her. That quarrel. I shouldn't have let her know. I lost my temper, stupid. Now I must... Oh, I must think clearly. Now, what was my plan? How was I going to kill her? It mustn't look like murder. They'll suspect things then. It must be suicide. And it must be soon now that she knows... She's starting again. She's singing again that hymn, that hymn. No, no, I, I must be calm. Don't get excited. Think clearly. How was I going to kill her? Oh, I wish it were over. I could go back then. Back to David. How quickly she saw through that. That I'd go back in her place. But he'll never suspect. I'll be Ellie to him. Ellie could and happy again. I'll learn to smile. First she must die. Now, which way is best? The stairs. Of course, the stairwell. She gets dizzy if she looks down into the stairwell. Yes, it will be so easy. In a day or two, that policeman will come back to the house. They'll find her and they'll think it's me. The stairwell floors from the attic here. Three floors straight down. It's so easy when you think clearly. The stairwell, of course. <laughs> Ellie. Ellie. You mustn't cry anymore. Do you hear me? Are you afraid of the dark? I'll light the lamp for you. There, dear. That's better, isn't it? Why, you're shivering. Are you cold? Come. Put your wrapper on. We'll go down to the parlor and light a fire. And I'll make a nice cup of hot milk for you. Come, Ellie. No. Ellie, stop acting like this. Now. Now, come, dear. Here's your wrapper. Put it around your shoulders. That's a girl now. Get up. Get up now. I'll carry the lamp. Give me your hand, dear. Why, you're cold as ice. Now be careful. Walk slowly. There we are. Now hold on to the banister, dear. That's right. I'll hold the lamp up high so you can see better. I'm afraid. The stairwell. It's right here, dear. You see? I'm afraid. Ellie, you must get over that fear. Look, Kelly. Just look down. There's nothing to frighten you. Look down the stairwell, Ellie. No! I'm holding you, dear. Now just lean over and look down. You can see all the way. No! Don't make me look. Don't make you see, me look. It's nothing. No. It's nothing, nothing no. at all. Now, are no. you dizzy? I'm holding you. Let me go. Come I closer, can't stand dear. it. No, come closer. No! Lean over. Lean over. No, no! Do you hear, Ellie? Let me get back. Ellie, look down. No! No, no, Let Ellie. Let me go! Lean over. No. Look down. No. Look down! No. strange thing, yes. It was brought to my mind, of course, because this is the house just here. Uh, this one? Uh, the next one we're coming to, yes. Uh, she was in to see us just a few days ago. Came in to order the casket. Uh, she saw a casket she wanted, and then she told me it was for herself. Hmm. She must have had a premonition. Uh, I notified the police, of course, why she said she wanted me to hold the casket three weeks. Then, just the day before yesterday, the police came back to the house here and found her lying at the bottom of the stairwell, dead. Oh, she'd been dead about two days. 
Funny how she knew. There's the banister up on the attic floor broke away and she fell. Uh, did she have any people? No, let alone, they tell me. We're going to bury her tomorrow. Haskell, the name was. Haskell. Strange, living all by herself here in a big three-story frame house. Yes, isn't it? Say, well, what is it? My, my imagination, I guess. I, I could have sworn I saw a light in the attic window just now. Oh, well, it couldn't have been. The police have shut it up. Yes, yes, of course. That story of yours really gave me the creeps. <laughs> Let's walk on. <laughs> what a queer thing the power of suggestion is. You've conveyed it to me. But well, you, you know, just now I thought I could hear someone upstairs in there. Uh, a woman. A woman singing. A woman? Yes, uh, sort of uh, crooning to herself. Some kind of hymn. Uh, yes, uh, look, supposing, just supposing, you didn't already have an auto light stay full battery in your car, what would be the first thing you'd do tomorrow morning? Eat breakfast. Mm. Then what? Well, then I... Uh, right, right. You'd make hay with your coupe right straight down to your nearest auto light dealer and ask for an auto light stay full battery, that beautifully built battery with the biggest bunch of bonus features you ever saw. Why, that Autolite Stay Full battery needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Has extra electrical capacity and an extra long life. What's more, friends, the Autolite people make over 400 other automotive, aviation, and marine parts in their 26 nationwide plants. Every part famous for its Autolite engineered dependability. And remember, friends, Autolite means batteries. Stay full batteries. Autolite means spark plugs. Ignition engineered resistor spark plugs. Autolite means ignition systems. The lifeline of your car. And now here again is Miss Rosalind Russell. It has been a great pleasure to appear here tonight on Suspense. And I want to thank Tony Leader and his fine cast, and especially Loren Tuttle, for her splendid performance as Ellie. I know none of you will want to miss James Cagney's appearance next week on radio's outstanding theater of thrills in a story called No Escape, another gripping study in... Suspense. Miss Rosalind Russell may currently be seen in the independent artist production, The Velvet Touch. Tonight's suspense play, The Sisters, was written by George Wells, with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Bluskin. The entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader. In the coming weeks, suspense will present such stars as Ronald Coleman, William Bendix, Ethel Barrymore, Frank Sinatra, and many others. Make it a point to listen each Thursday to Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. And next Thursday, same time, hear James Cagney in No Escape. This is the Autolite Suspense Show. Autolite salutes the automotive industry on the occasion of the observance tonight in Detroit of the production of the 100 million motor vehicle. Good night. Switch to Autolite. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.